Nicole is worried about being worried. Is there anybody out there who's tired of this ish? That would be me. You're the head of the line, aren't you? Numero uno. And I would be willing to bet that there are a whole lot of viewers lined up right behind me. Two, three, four, five, six. Welcome to Cliff Alert. Today we're going to be talking about Lifetime Network's reality-based TV series, Married at First Sight, season number 16, episode number 17. But before we get into it, please like, share, and subscribe. Please send us your comments, and we thank you and appreciate you. Nicole and the rest of characters are still in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. We see Nicole is waking up. Evidently, they were turned up. Chris was still asleep. And after she got up, their their first order of business for the day was hooking up with Kirsten and Shaq to uh, check out this old Western time photos place where they dress up in old country garb or something and, and take black and white photos. As Nicole and Kirsten were choosing their outfits, Nicole decides to tell Kirsten that she is worried and anxious that they have not yet found a place to live. This is after decision day and she needs that to be locked down because she's ha feeling a kind of way about that. And we all know what happens when Nicole feels a kind of way. <laughs> they go on to Lumberjack Feud show. Yeah, run by a guy named Uncle Boo. Yeah, they do some sort of Lumberjack um, sporting activities and they show us um, them throwing an axe, chopping wood, and eventually these two guys show them how to do pole climbing. Yeah. And it was very interesting to watch how quickly and skillfully they got up those poles and then came down. Yeah, I know my ass. While I'm not afraid of heights, I could do it. It might take me a year to get up there, but... Man, they might have some problems getting back down. They go through the activities. We see them, and finally, they decide to do the pole climbing. It was Nicole versus Chris. And we don't know whether Chris allowed Nicole to win because he didn't want to hear about it. But she won. She got up to the blue line, and all was well in her world, so much so that she was talking ish. Well, at least she was able to enjoy that that uh, that kind of activity and have some, uh, I guess, reasonable success at it because later on that would not be the case. Well, it's, it seems to me that the only time you will be able to shut Nicole up is when one when she's sleeping and two when you let her win. Or three when us as viewers hit the mute button. The group separated and we saw Nicole. I believe it was Shaq, Jasmine, and Clint. And Nicole was telling Jasmine that she wished Eris was here to watch Jasmine go up that pole because Jasmine went further than anyone in the group. Nicole said that Eris would have found Jasmine going so far up the pole like really sexy and that it was a missed opportunity. Yeah, and I think that... Um... I think the the observation made by Nicole was correct. I think um, you know it seems like to me they're they're starting to uh, I guess connect more and more. Um, you know, heading into decision day, and I think that uh, it was just something that I believe or feel like Nicole said to kind of encourage Jasmine about you know about their relationship. Right. Because I I feel like she feels like she and Chris are in a safe place, safe space. So you know. Why not take the opportunity to encourage somebody else? Right. So then we see Nicole and Chris uh, playing miniature golf. She complained that the ball was not going where she wanted it to go. She complained that she was hitting the ball hard. She talked about she getting frustrated and she wanted to stop because she was discouraged. And meanwhile, Chris is giving her an opportunity to try to succeed, to play over and over and over again, but that wasn't good enough. She still complained some more. Uh, Y'all not trying to tell me that Chris was like, come on. At one point, Chris asked if she's having any kind of fun at this point because he started dragging and she, because she took all the life and joy out of it. Chris was... Um... 
shall we say, deflated by Nicole's attitude and this self-sabotage talk in her head and in reality that uh, that Pastor Cal warned her to just stop doing it because it is coming uh, to be a problem not only for her and but anybody else around her, i.e. her husband, Chris. Clint prepares dinner. Now they're discussing how they feel. Decision day is right around the corner. And Nicole said that she's grateful for the group She's grateful that she was able to share um, wisdom with them. Jasmine piped up and talked about her uh, Nicoleisms. And I wonder exactly what Nicoleisms really means. I don't know. I ain't figured about it. If y'all have, let us know. I don't know. Do you really want to know, really going down to, to down the rabbit hole with inside Nicole's head. On second thought, never mind. Jasmine bought a card game with her to the retreat and she wanted the couples to do it as well. And one of the questions that Chris pulled was, what is the least thing that you like about me and what is the best thing you like about me? And what did Chris tell Nicole? Chris said the least thing that he likes about his wife, Nicole, is the fact that she's overly hard on herself. Dear Chris, I'm hoping that Nicole really heard that. As it relates to what he likes most about his wife, Chris said that he likes the fact that Nicole is caring and compassionate. Yes. And that's what the really is, you know, from his vantage point, uh, so attractive about his wife. Yeah, and uh, Nicole's question to Chris was the, the same response. What is the best and what is the least? Right. The least for her was she believed Chris puts himself last for everyone, and she wished he would start putting himself first. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going to come back, so I, I hope you heard that point. Mm -hmm. And then she said the 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 best thing she she knows about him. He makes others feel comfortable and, and genuine, and he's genuinely a loving kind of guy, and that's what she loves about her husband, Chris. Right. Mm hmm. And, you know, Chris is he's a laid back guy and all that. But, but I, I honestly feel like he's trying. He's really trying yes. to, to yes. deal with a, a, an issue that's going to be, you know, um, snowballing, shall we say, as they when the cameras go off, as they move further and further into their relationship. And I, I think it's pretty obvious to me that they're going to be you know, both saying yes to one another on decision day. But that doesn't come without, you know some issues that need to be addressed heading into that so that they have at least a, a roadmap to how to deal with that, you know, behind decision day. Amen. I don't even think Chris has had enough time to develop a skill set that will be able to endure the issues that Nicole will be bringing into their relationship. And then the following morning, Nicole starts in again about the, the leasing thing and the resonance situation. And being concerned about living together and not want to live separately after decision day and having a plan ready in place prior to decision day so that they don't have to stress out about that. And, and she is just barraging him with question after question after question. So he told her that, you know, don't worry, we're going to take care of this. She said, fine, okay. And now I want to do something silly. I want us to dress up as dinosaurs and then go upstairs for breakfast dressed as these dinosaurs because it's just going to be a lot of fun. And you could tell by the look on Chris's face, he thought it was stupid. It was. He did not want to participate in it. He didn't want to and he just wanted to go upstairs and eat have breakfast with the other crew but miss nicole wasn't having it she started in with her little manipulation and that she wants him to enjoy this with her how about when he said i don't understand this this makes no sense to me i really don't want to do it that she stopped and said okay i can hear what you're saying I'll do it. Because uh, because of the other chatter that's going on in her head that drowns out what, what, that, what could be that voice telling her to do that part of it. 
you can't have your wife or your husband just out there acting stupid in public. That's a real situation we try to avoid Best at every point. No question, but it doesn't seem like, as you said, Chris has gotten to that point where he knows how to deal with that part of it. Because sometimes I want to go for a walk at midnight, and you will tell me you go walk with me, but it's got to be towards the bed. You got a witness out there, I'm sure. I mean, come on, girl. You don't have to force your man to do stupid ish if he don't want to. To prove his love, I guess, to you or to reaffirm, reaffirm that? It just seems manipulative to me. And he wasn't strong enough to say, no, girl, that's not going to happen. I don't want to dress up as a dinosaur. I'm out. See you upstairs. And I say this off camera, but I'll share it with you guys on camera. Nicole can suck the air out of an uninflated balloon. Somehow, I think that if if he had done what you suggested he should have done, Nicole would have had a whole she would have had a, a whole kind of conniption based on why he did it and what that says about their marriage and this and that. She would have gone off, you know, sideways on on that on his reaction. So he damned if he do, damned if he did. So by the time they got upstairs, Chris was right. They did look stupid. Chris, please, just say no. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Instincts are correct. Just say no, Chris. You can do it. No. And oh, no.